he got knocked back into the wall, right? And he goes outside of like the death line, right? He's outside, but he gets rescued at the, the, the perfect moment. So he gets slingshotted. Yes, P2. Yeah, yeah Zesh rescued him. So he, you see him out of bounds, right? Where he should be dead, but he gets rescued and he gets pulled back in. And his face, he's just like, oh. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> what just happened? Welcome to Velvet Room Conversations. I am your host, Sly, a.k.a. Gray Fox, your host of the Velvet Room. And joining us tonight for conversation, he is a content creator. Twitch partner, RPG enjoyer, Final Fantasy fan, Final Fantasy 14 in-game raider and raid coach. All around good guy and my friend, Lama Todd. Ladies and gentlemen, how you doing? Oh, oh man, I'm great. Thank you. Thank you for having me. That's it's a it's an honor. It's an honor to be here. It's an honor to have you. Room. It's an honor to have you. Like again, last year, well, before we go, I know you don't probably have a drink, but you know. Toast to you. Thank you again. Hey, I've got, I've got something. All right. I've got a little something. Ooh, what are you having? A little bit of four roses, small batch. Okay. Okay. Um, again, uh, we, we kind of, I kind of pitched this to Todd last year and, mm -hmm. and, and I've already told y'all all of this on Twitter, how, 2023 kind of got away from me and it was just um and I kind of feel like it got away from a lot of us too in the space. I, honestly, since 2019 it's just all been a blur. I, I don't <laughs> I don't even know. It's all just, just <laughs> do you, mushed together. Do you know? Do you know? I had to like somebody had to ask me literally before before I took my vacation Sly, When did you when was the last time you taken a vacation? We're not talking TwitchCon. No. We're not talking fan fest where you are Sly, AK Gray Fox. When did you just gone to do right. something just to do something like for yourself? I'm like, you know, mm -hmm. in, in you my far between in my 10 years of streaming, I've never taken a vacation. Oh my God. Well, we, we need to get on that right now. Yeah. yeah I mean, I already did. I already did back in uh, January. And let me tell you, let me tell you, the the first thing I did was sleep. <laughs> like I had some, of, <laughs> I had some of the best that sleep. That is perfectly fine, man. I like I've had some vacations, getaways, and it's like we go to the beach, and I get there, and I just sleep, and it's like I don't want to be bothered. And some people have like, I got to have the itinerary. We got to do these things. Mm -hmm. And, and I just, I just stop. I'm on vacation. <laughs> I'm on vacation. <laughs> and, and, and just let me sleep. <laughs> like, let me, let me just be like, if I want to go somewhere, I'll go somewhere. I'll show up, but I'm on vacation. <laughs> and it's just, yeah, it, rest is so important. It is because like, I, like usually for my day to day, and I don't know about your day to day, but we'll talk about it. My day to day is, sure. you know, wake up, you know, breakfast, shit, shower, shave, get, get ready mm. to be presentable on stream. Uh, if I had to do like Patreon stuff, I'll do that. Uh, work stuff. I usually mm -hmm. take care of that and then stream. And then Monday through Thursday after stream, which is like stream eight hours, usually anime mm. nights for about like a couple more hours for like two hours. Oh, and then, nice. you know, I'm kind of free for the rest of the night. And so I'm usually done about 11 ish, 12 ish. A normie schedule, kind of. Kind of. Somewhat. It, last year, I usually didn't get to sleep until about three or four. And rent, yeah. rent's rather repeat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a bit of a DJ, and I, I definitely stay up very late. It's, I'm, on, I'm basically on third shift. Yeah. I try to explain to people. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> like, I, well... I used to be there with you. I used to be uh, like the overnight stream and go into like 7 a.m. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I got older. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
I know. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> the yeah, uh, I, I go until the uh, the cats the cats get me in for breakfast. They're uh, like, hey, it's time to feed me, and so I'm like, all right, let's. I uh, must must end stream now. The cats must be fed. They've got me on a on a tight schedule. Many cats. <laughs> we got two. Ooh. We got two cats. I've always wanted yeah. one. And, oh, I didn't think I'd be a cat person. Uh, I grew up you know, with, with dogs. Uh, my pa parents always had uh, Shelties, actually, mm -hmm. miniature collies. Um, and I was like, oh, I, I, want a, I want a Sheltie. I want, you know, I want a little Samoyed or something. And I was like, I don't care about cats. And then mm -hmm. we get, you know, we get our, you know, get married, get a house, and we're in this neighborhood, and a cat just wanders in a neighbor's backyard. And uh, I don't know if you uh, know the whole system, but like there's like a life just kind of hands you a cat. The cat distribution system. No, I haven't been part of that. No, you haven't. OK, uh. well, there, there is a cat distribution system. And so our, our ticket was up. So it's like, here's a cat. Uh, and I had my arms crossed and I was like, I don't want that thing. And of course, my wife was like, I want that thing. <laughs> so we, we got that thing. And I was like, it's got fleas. It's dirty. It's this little gross little like gremlin looking kitten it was not cute and i was like uh in our house it's like you'll end and i said we'll see how it goes mm. well like we'll, we'll give it a night or two we'll see how it goes and then like i was ready to like take it back to like a i don't know somewhere else but but it yeah four or five years later we're still seeing how it goes so it's <laughs> <laughs> she 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 little kitten she uh, climbed up on the bed and she curled up on my head and started like licking my hair that, that had to do it. and uh and i'm like uh cats know cats know like the the one person that like doesn't like them or like doesn't what do you want to be around them and they find them and they try to make friends like they warm up to you and it's like okay all right all right all right you're cute okay fine you can stay <laughs> <laughs> acquiesced real quick after that huh oh it was so quick it was yeah it was one night and i i my wife likes to tease me and like make me feel really bad because I, I love my cats. And she's like, your daddy didn't even want you. And I'm like, don't say that. Don't say that. Come on. Man. <laughs> like, how could I not want this thing? This cute baby. Oh, God. Yeah, we, we spoil them. We spoil them cats so much. They are spoiled rotten. One day, one day I'll have the pleasure to be a cat parent. Used mm -hmm. to be uh for my mom like I'm by my mom like she she has a cat whenever i go visit her like, it's kind of my cat but like he's cool mm -hmm. i don't have a cat here at, at my house so right one day they're pretty they're pretty chill yeah, yeah they're pretty chill they, they definitely have uh, different personalities um like our, our first one she's way more laid back uh, our our second one luca she's a bit more um high strung and demanding uh very needy like you, you think Cats are independent, but um, no, she they <laughs> she follows me around. She has to be in the same room. Like she she's very attached. Yeah, my mom's cat. Just... And forget going to the bathroom by yourself ever. <laughs> my mom's cat just you, you have slept a on buddy. me. Like you, when I was yeah. just laying on the couch, it would just get on my back oh, and yeah. just lay there with me, and we'd just be two sleepy sleepy fucks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. They they do that. They they curl up like right on my chest or like kind of like between my legs and they just, I, I can't move. Um, and then of course our, our first cat, Ayla, um, she likes to put like her butt, like right in my face though. Like, I don't know. That's just the way she likes to lay. Just, I wake up. I'm like, Oh, it's like a tail and a butt in my face. I'm like, okay, thanks. Thanks for this. Just cat, butt. <laughs> <laughs> but. Yeah. But, um, again, Again, thank you so much for agreeing to come on. Um, part of what I wanted to do with this podcast is, you know, I know a, I know a lot of people. I inherited this kind of gift from my dad of making, like, lots of friends. Like, over mm -hmm. a, I'd say a short period of time, 10 years. Uh, it kind of feels long, but at the same time, in, in, in the grand scheme of things, I feel like it's a short period of time. Uh, and yeah, very personable. Yeah. Yeah, easy to talk to. Yeah. And and all these friends, all these friends of mine have their own journeys, their own stories. And so uh through through this podcast, I wanted 
them, aka you, to kind of, to kind of highlight your story, to kind of tell people who may not know about you, what you've been through, uh, maybe in not just in the creator space, but just in life in general. Sure. Uh, where where to begin? I where mean. to <laughs> begin? Um, uh, well, I want to start in I want to start in the content creator space because sure. I I started in 2013 now you i want to say you started after me oh i did yeah, yeah. what year uh i want to say 2018 probably yeah 2018 it was like right before covid I, I'll, I'll admit <laughs> okay i'll admit something i did or maybe 17 li- yeah i did a little bit of research and i'm like I'm trying to see when did you start and there were streams I was, from 2017. There were streams from 2017. There were. There, I had like a few, like no cam. It was just me doing some raids with a, my static. Um, I think a lot of people might start out that way. Just like, oh, let's just, I'll just stream our prog or all our clears or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and then that turned into like streaming party finder and like doing some coaching parties where I was just like helping folks um still didn't have a camera uh for a while um and then I think the deal was if I hit affiliate I would um actually get a camera um and then when I got affiliate I had to also I promised my chat I would play Doki Doki Literature Club so that was the first non-Final Fantasy stream i i ever ever streamed <laughs> i don't know if you know that one if you've played that one but it's, I, I, have was... not. I haven't okay okay I, i've um, known it's, about it's it. definitely a, a meme yeah i've known about the meme yeah and it's, the... it's very disturbing yeah mm-hmm. i've heard i haven't seen like i haven't like really watched a playthrough but i've seen bits and pieces and the bits i saw where where it was kind of yeah, just monica yeah and then the bits where it was just monica and it's just like what the hell am i watching well, afterwards, um, since I, I was so amused by that by that game, uh, I made another Twitch account just called like I think it was just just Monica. I forgot the login, but I would go find other people's streams, and I would wait for that. There's a point in the game where <laughs> that would be that would apply really well, where they'd start freaking out, and I would just type in their chat with like some glitchy text, and <laughs> they would freak out so much. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, and and they'd see like my account was like a couple years old too. Like I was like years later, I'd I'd still mess with people. So whenever I'm bored, I'll just mess with people doing Doki Doki. <laughs> that with that uh username. So so when I when I started, I I kind of was I kind of was like a little bit of variety because when I started, the the main reason why I started on Twitch was um actually man versus game, and. Mm. I used to come like get home from work, watch man versus game. And he would be playing whatever random game. And from my, from my mind's eye, simple, but why the hell is he so terrible? I could do this. I just don't <laughs> have a camera or, or software. And then PlayStation four came out and I'm like, okay. Um, and it, and then I realized I had to be painting too because that, that was the other thing and so that started now when you started you said you started with final fantasy 14 yes yes it, yes it was it was all just read content I, I pretty much just stuck primarily to that mm-hmm. um uh yeah i was just what I, I think at the time uh it was the omega raid tier mm-hmm. um and uh, that was the first raid tier that i like cleared like on content mm-hmm. um and i was like okay well let's go back and learn it on different roles since like i cleared it on ninja like i want to go back and get a, a a healer or astro clear and then maybe a tank uh, warrior clear and then i use that as an opportunity to do my like read coaching and stuff it's like well i'm learning another role but i know this fight really well so i'll just help people that are also learning and then it'll give me a chance to kind of learn this new role like it kind of reinforcing what I know too. Cause like mm-hmm. you really start to understand a fight. If you can actually explain the mechanics and everything 
to other people and then they can in turn learn it from you yeah because you're, you're being clear and concise so it's good practice and um i think what what happened was uh well, actually i know what happened it was some friends um hit me up to do the epic of alexander um mm. to a, a, a prog group with that um when that came out uh and was actually um Zeno's group, his second group, uh. um, he was he was helping us prog, and it was, um, it was the Fickle Pickles. That was our raid team. Yeah. So my, my buddy Zesh and uh, uh, Galaxy AUS was in there, and Fenra, uh, just a bunch of good people. Wow. Um, and I think after that, that kind of put me on more of a spotlight. Uh, you know, because Zeno has, has already he's been a staple. You know, he's the OG, right? Mm -hmm. And um, you know, he, he tossed me raids, he'd shout me out, uh, and then I would, I'd just do my, my coaching groups and it just kind of blew up from there. So I, I, I owe a lot to that group. <laughs> you, you had definitely had some all-stars in that group and like, and we're talking like the early days before, like when I, I, I kind of consider the early days was when you know, 14 was kind of tight knit in terms of the category, like everybody, it was kind of like high school. Everybody knew mm -hmm. everybody. And so now we're... It's still kind of like that, in a way, don't you think? I mean, I think we it, all kind of know... We, we all kind of know the creators. everybody, like, even the newer people, but it's not like... Mm -hmm. It wasn't, like, years ago. I mean, we well, have yeah. way I more people now. True. Yeah, it's, it's definitely blown up a bit. Yeah. Um, more creators and stuff. But, yeah, was, yeah, I, I, I'd, I'd agree with that. Now, I know you to be one of one of the uh, very few first to, to kind of, even back in the day, teach people, teach and coach mm -hmm. raids. Because uh, mm -hmm. uh, for, for a lot of us, me included, it, like we were left to the waste of PF, and it's like, good luck, have fun. Um, right. Yeah. And so um, I, I kind of want to talk about that and, you know, how it started from there. And, and then I want to say, I want to say through it, it kind of, it kind of blew up in Shadowbringers. You kind of like maybe out of necessity or I don't know, but you, I want to say that you create, help create this, you know, this rating renaissance, this, this rating renaissance where oh it's my like, God. like, it's totally, it's, it's totally inaccessible to most just out of sheer fear or ability but you take people under your wing and you're getting them savage clears. You're getting them ultimate clears. And, and, <laughs> and like, yeah, you had a really big hand in that, in this rating renaissance. I would, I would say so. I can't take all the credit, but like, I, I definitely played a, I'd say a large role in that. Um, yeah. Shadowbringers. It was like the perfect mix of things because, um, Gosh, we, I mean, we also had like, um, folks from, from WoW coming over. We had like all kinds of attention on, on Final Fantasy 14. That, that was like, that to me was like peak Final Fantasy, uh, rating and popularity. Um, I, I, maybe it's gone down a little bit, uh, but I, I am happy to see that the rating scene, like it's, it's still, um, very prominent and there's there's even more groups out there um coaching and helping um especially uh with ultimates mm -hmm. um tons of groups like i in fact i if i usually check the directory and i see people doing party finder groups and, and helping groups it's it's primarily uh ultimates and like and now's the the it's the greatest time to do your ultimates uh between a now and an expansion mm -hmm. it's a perfect time um, but, but yeah, man, we, gosh, we had so many groups and I think, I think one of the, uh, the things I was pretty good at, uh, was bringing in not just the new players. Cause that was, that was my focus, like my bread and butter. I'm like, all right, mm -hmm. I want to help people that don't think they can do savage. Don't think they can do ultimate. And I want to teach them. It's like, Hey, it's not so bad. You can do this. Maybe you just had a bad experience at party finder, but let me show you how I do it and maybe you can actually learn something and you can go in 
with that confidence. Like I want to, I want to teach them. I, I didn't want to just get them a clear and then, okay, you're done. I wanted to teach them so they could go into party finder without me. Like that was important. I would try to like reinforce uh, how I coached. I would, I would start removing call outs. I'd, I'd ask them to explain things back to me. Um, cause I, I just, I really didn't want to have a, a people just not know what they're doing after getting a clear with me. Right. And many of them, well, many of them actually went on to teach others or maybe made their own static. Yeah. And uh, so that's, of course, that's a, I think it's a huge compliment when they do that. Me on a personal level, I, um, I, don't tend to trust PF and I've always had this love hate relationship with PF. And I think a lot of people do, um, mm -hmm. I always describe, you know, having, you know, a static, uh, you know, decent, competent static of, you know, people who, who, you know, may not know the fight in, in, in general, but like when they, when they come together, um, mm -hmm. you know, they can clear content that, that it's like having, it's like having, having a static is like having a, a, a carpool. Whereas, PF is the Uber or Lyft. You don't know what, what driver you're. Right, right. And there's no like review system. No, really. No. I mean, there is. <laughs> there, well, yeah, yeah. I mean, some I've seen some wow. people talk shit on Twitter. Uh, rare, seen, rarely. Yeah, they're rarely, but yeah. I mean, there's definitely like discords in like lists <laughs> it's like don't raid with don't raid with this person yeah yeah, yeah twitter yeah people get put on blast there too <laughs> um uh but yeah like I, I mean outside of just like helping the new people i, I think uh, i really enjoyed bringing in other content creators that also didn't think that they could do savage uh and like raiding with them and, and pulling those people together um and I think that all kind of culminated with, um, well, we had the big group with, uh, with Rich, like the very popular streamer yeah. at the time. Yeah. Uh, and I had all of the, some of the best raiders and streamers together and we, we did all the ultimates and that was a, that was a huge thing for, for Final Fantasy. And I think, I think that put ultimates in the spotlight where people could be like, well, if they can do that or if he can do that, I want to do that. And I, I think that since then, I'm not saying I'm responsible for that, but I think since then it's blown up. Ultimate PF has definitely blown up. I'll agree. I'll, I'll so agree maybe, with that. Um, maybe there's some influence there, but I, I feel like it's, it's definitely blown up since then. I wouldn't say necessarily. That's, that's great to see. I wouldn't say necessarily just ultimates, but just in game rating in general, we have people who were just sprouts and they they see that and they're mm -hmm. they're off to the races immediately like nothing else exists there there's no there's no gold saucer there's no there's no glams there's no no true in game but in game rating and yeah it, it i i definitely agree that kind of you and you know the popularity and how uh say i'll say frosty too with you know the whole world oh yeah thing. oh yeah frosty <clears throat> yeah just absolutely just, you know, putting attention to in-game rating as a whole. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Frosty's done a great job since we've never really had, like, official help with, like, race coverage. Yeah. Like, that's all done by fans and Frosty. And it's like, he's, like, he has organized so much and, like, getting sponsorships. Like, it's, it's definitely improved over time, and that's, uh, I gotta credit him. I gotta give him credit for that. Yeah. In comparison to in comparison to a realm reborn, how do you, how do you feel about the state of rating right now? Because it was a bit, it was different. Um, it was way different for us when we were doing core. Where whereas like <laughs> now it's just oh my god, yeah. Uh, <laughs> jobs were just were so different. I mean, gosh, it's. I mean, a lot of a lot of the stuff's like more, I guess, I guess, uh, homogenized uh, in a way, right? I mean, mm -hmm. some jobs, like I think, I feel like they lost a bit of their identity. Um, 
I mean, some good, some bad. I mean, I, I there's <laughs> there were some really janky things that you had to do with uh like warrior or something like you had with the, with the stance dancing and, and like uh, like the different combos for like for threat and um like the the crazy countdowns like you had like a minute countdown for just to for your cooldowns to reset or like even actually I think all cooldowns a lot of the cooldowns like it didn't you had to like wait forever yeah for some of them yeah like cause even on death they they wouldn't reset at back then it was yeah so we we have a lot of quality of life changes mm -hmm. now compared to then um and remember we had like the whole cross class thing yeah like that was gone so <laughs> so we we had some unique things we could do in raiding um oh yeah and i I'd, I'd say threat was uh definitely a thing you had to look out for uh back in coils and uh even through um like stormblood raids too right i mean it was yeah you, you had to use uh smoke screen shade walker shade like a ninja walker, i always uh, had to, like on my elusive. opener i i i had to i had yeah you you had to uh threat drop yeah and of course your don't forget your t your tp yeah don't forget goad because... don't forget goad and tp and oh my god if you hit sprint well <laughs> well <laughs> <laughs> you ain't doing you're anything not, you're not hitting things you're just going to you're just right click and afk for a while cuz you're not hitting any buttons Oh man! Yeah, that was that was messed up, man. Yeah, people people don't realize like what it, TP was, and <laughs> they don't know what they're missing or what they. Well, I guess that's not what they're missing. It's just they're lucky. They're very lucky. Very they didn't have to deal fortunate. with that. Very fortunate. It, it it turned a lot of melee people into uh, like casters and stuff because a caster could just could sprint, no problem there. Imagine if you were a caster and you hit sprint and all your mana was gone. <laughs> oh, yeah. Accuracy caps. Yeah. Blood for I, blood. I, I, hate, I hate accuracy. Mm -hmm. Cleric stance. Yeah. We had, we had a caster bard for a little while. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think, I don't know. I, I kind of liked old Astro. If I'm gonna be honest, I mean, it was like you had more cards I and you had you. like more. I love you. Time dilation. You had all these like cool things to extend buffs and. I love you. I just I liked that. Uh, I liked that a lot. You now, are, now it's just kind of like. You are the only one who agrees with me on it. Before it. Oh. <laughs> now it's just like to pick a color. It's like okay, melee card, uh, range card, uh, whatever. Like there was, there was nothing else to it. I mean, I guess people could argue, well, you don't have to deal with, uh, what was it, bowl cards? And like, it's like, what do I do with this one? But but you you could mess with people with some of the haste cards. But it was, yeah. it was kind of funny. Yeah. You could. <laughs> it's like, my cooldowns are all messed up now. You're, you're screwing up my rotation. <laughs> like, yeah, well, sorry. <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah, it was definitely a different, different space in terms of quality of life, in terms of... I just call you live mechanics too. Like, mm -hmm. I feel like as we've gone through each each expans expansion, we we get this evolution of mechanics. Uh, we we get we we get this, you know, I wouldn't say difficulty spike. I mean, yeah, it kind of has spiked since. I mean, we didn't have anything kind of like uh, I don't know, uh, P twelve. Back in the day, I mean, mm -hmm. coil wasn't really that bad. I mean, it it it, it was a check, yeah, but it wasn't. Right. It wasn't as like mechanically inclined. Like it wasn't like a dance like P twelve is. Um. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, how do you feel about the uh, where we're at? Where we're at mechanics and you know difficulty and. And door bosses and oh right uh door bosses um man i mean it's it's it is kind of nice to have like a checkpoint there uh but i i actually really like um e8s where it's really you have to do everything it's not really a door boss it's just here's the whole fight and it's like it's pretty hard 
Mm-hmm. Um, but in terms of difficulty, yeah, I, I I definitely think we've got some some pretty tough mechanics uh, in certain fights, like a lot of them that just stick out and that we just have like memes about. It's like oh, like light rampant, right? Like we <laughs> like that that always just wrecked groups, um, right? So I mean, and we're probably gonna get some version of that Eden Ultimate. So get ready, He's get ready for to light rampant version two. Um, but yeah, I, I think they've gotten very creative with, uh, what they can do with, um, tethers. <laughs> we, we get a lot of, we get a lot of tether mechanics, but, um, it's, it's, it is interesting, um, the different ways they can like handle that. Like, um, what was it? Uh, what P8, P8, uh, had a lot of tethers P- and of course we have, oh well, we got, we got tethers on all of them. P12 mm-hmm. has tethers. Just tethers for everyone. Uh, and there's just, I mean, we, we got like the basics there, like the, the stack spread buddies, groups. Um, and then I, I think with door bosses, they've got this formula where it's like um, door boss is like kind of DPS um, check. And then after that, like the main boss is like the puzzle boss. It's like, okay, you made it, you had the damage. Now do the puzzle. So I'll you know, figure this one out. So it's more about like execution and, mm-hmm. but uh, in a way that's like a, a bit easier. Cause like, well, once you know the puzzle, it's like, okay, well, all right, just, just do it. So it's not like you have to, you know, do much else. It's like, it's solved for you. Um, but it was, it was fun. I, I, I enjoyed this last tier. Um, I still think Omega was probably my favorite. The, the escapes. The escapes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The escapes. It's just good. I, I didn't really... I wasn't going hard into uh, Alexander. Um, I think I was a bit more casual at the time. Uh, I, I was progging a little bit. Um, but it was like a... It was like an FC group, so we wouldn't really take things too seriously. Mm-hmm. And I think we our our best was like we got to uh, A11, A11S. We didn't quite get through twelve. We couldn't. We actually couldn't get through door bosses as a group uh, for twelve. Then uh, early Omega um, uh, Delta Escape, mm-hmm. um, we. <laughs> We just couldn't meet the uh, the DPS check, and I think that's that's kind of like where I started getting a little frustrated because some people would show up just not prepared at all, mm-hmm. and like the other half would would be prepared, and it's like some people just wouldn't know their rotation. And now it became important. It's like guys, like what are we doing? Like if if we're progging and we want to get past a door boss with a DPS check, like some of you guys are gonna have to take a look at your rotation and see what you're doing wrong. But some of them wouldn't. I would take it upon myself to go through combat logs. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I'd be like, hey, here's how you can improve. Uh, and some of them didn't take too kindly to that, unfortunately. So I was like, all right, well, I guess I'll just have to go find some other groups and stuff. But uh, yeah, I-, I think it's important with the static that everyone's on the same page and you, you all set expectations because uh, that's, that's going to be very important in how you all come together and how everyone performs and how people get along. So it's like, are, are you a week one group where it's like, we are going to clear a savage tier the first week? Or are you, well, let's just, let's see what happens. Let's try our best, but maybe if we clear in a few weeks, no big deal. Or are you just, hey, let's just have fun don't really care. I'd like to prog, but I don't want to stress out about anything. Like, okay, well, as long as people are on the same page, you, you'll be good. And I agree with that. And I, I kind of taken um, the latter stance in terms, in terms of rating where it's just like, we, we, the, the, the raid name, we got shit to do stem from, stem from me. As in, I, mm-hmm. as a person, I sly, cannot commit to you know three four days of rating a week like we do, oh, right, we do right. one day we hit it really hard whatever we do we mm-hmm. do and those 
in those three to four hours that we do on Sunday, and that's it. Like I myself, like I, I have, I usually make a schedule for the week in terms of content uh, I'm, I'm going to do on stream, and I've been there in the past where it's it's you know three to four days a week. Sometimes they'll sneak in a day and not tell you, "Hey, we're going today." I'm like, "No, I can't do that." Right. Yeah. Um, and so I, I agree with you with everyone being on the same page in terms of like hardcore, you know, big core, like, you know, like you said, your week one warriors, your, your, okay, we'll, we'll try week one. And if we don't, well, it's not a big deal. Like as long as we're clearing stuff, that's fine. You know, right. Right. It, it gets more ca- casual as you go along. So I can definitely, uh, I definitely appreciate all parts of the spectrum. I would want to say the most of his hardcore was probably Alexander. Well, it was probably like okay. final Alexander because I remember that day it, it, we cleared Alex, Alex rates. Those were, those were hard, man. The um, early Alex, early Alex was, and then final Alex wasn't that bad, but goddamn, we went to like 4 a.m. And this was, I think we, we rated about, I want to say 12 hours. <laughs> And this is like well past like first week. Like this is like oh, yeah, we were yeah. trying to clear. We were just wanting to clear creator, and and we did. So that's probably the the time I went the most hardcore. Now it's just I got mm-hmm. shit to do. I got like you know right now I'm playing Grand Blue. I still gotta get to P three P uh, P three reload. <laughs> like I can't. Like I mean the the oh, I've been playing some Grand Blue. How are you liking yeah, it? How are you liking it? It's it's good. Uh, I I really like Catalina. Ooh, she's great. Yeah. She's like she's Agrius. I was like, oh, that's Agrius. I like her. <laughs> lady, she's the Lady Knight. Okay, that's my main. I'm, I'm Voss Raga <laughs> being. I like being big, slow. But and I've been playing uh, some some Lance a lot too. He seems pretty nice. Yeah, I'm gonna do Sig free nets, but I'm a Voss Raga man. Big, a slow mm, man. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, That's the uh, the monk, right? He like he's the no, 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 boy, right? no. Vasarag is the guy with the, the scythe. Oh, the scythe. Okay, that guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, he, he like he's big, cool. slow charged hits, but they're meaty hits. Heck yeah. <laughs> So I've asked you about. Yeah, I think it's that's that's fun, man. Yeah, I've been playing with some friends, like doing the co op stuff. It's, yeah, it's a good time. Yeah, and then me having to split that between P three is just horrible. Like they they couldn't. Uh. Have, picked a better release window but thanks mm-hmm. thanks atlas mm-hmm. really appreciate it a lot of good games out <laughs> <laughs> um i kind of got your 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 head in sense of like the state of the game with rating how do you feel about the game as a whole right now because right now <sighs> you're on break you are on break from yes. the game and yes. i remember I remember the post. I remember I, I had the post. Um, you, you you felt burnout. You you felt burnout. Oh yeah, and big time. Um, that and uh, I remember something else happening uh, right before. This was around the time of uh, the time when you were on Mog Talk, and there was this one really dumb comment on Twitter. I can't remember, but you made it a command. Um. <laughs> Oh, what like the what happened to you yeah, or something? Yeah, that one. Oh yeah, yeah. But it's, uh, yeah, some someone just accused me of being like it's like a copy pasta. Some I actually ended up changing their mind. Uh, really? I went, went back and then Twitter. Yeah, and uh, they rethought everything they said because I'm like, I think you've got this all wrong, pal. Like someone else. Because they were responding to someone in the tweet that mm. was being super toxic towards me mm. over an opinion. Like, the guy just, like, was just a total, like, ass. And then I'm like, you know what you're defending, right? Like, uh, like this is just what I said. Like, this guy is, like, kind of being a jerk. Uh, anyway, I just, I pointed a few things out, and mm. he's like, okay, oh, okay. So he kind of backtracked a little bit. But, yeah, it was, I, I definitely had... Uh, <laughs> some things I had to get off my chest and I think I definitely might have said a few things that maybe might have upset 
uh, some of the diehard fans, but I think in general, most people agreed uh, where I was coming from. Mm. Um, but yeah, I, you, you can, you'll definitely piss off like a certain subset of, of uh, people in, in 14 when you like talk about uh, characters or their game. And uh, we, yeah, we had a mock talk. It was uh, with, with Sarah. Sarah and I, uh, yeah. yeah. And it was just kind of addressing the, the, the burnout and um, just, you know, <laughs> voicing any opinion on Twitter and just what happens like with, with the backlash from, from people and it's like, it's okay. It was just, it's okay to criticize the game. It's, it's really okay. And I've even had talks with like, um, people, um, at Square Enix and they're like, we don't mind you guys like criticizing the game. It's like, just, just as long as you're not like calling out developers, like individual, like by name or getting, cause there's been some crazy people on Twitter where they're like, you know, death threats and, and and trying to like really insult the developer as an individual. But like, if you just talk about the game and what you want to see done better, like that's okay. But, but even then um, you get these final fantasy Andes that get mad. If you're saying anything negative about 14. Oh yeah. And, and if there's no, it's not a whole lot of content happening at the time, then yeah, there's, there's going to be more drama posts and, and uh, people want to chime in. Um, but I, I kind of forget what I said, but I, I'm, it was just like, I just wanted some things to change. I was just, I've been unhappy with the MSQ probably since um, wow. Shadowbringers. I mean, there was some good parts of Inwalker, right? But like, well, all right. The, the, I did enjoy most of Inwalker up until like, the story concluded, but like post in Walker, I'm like, I had no interest. Mm -hmm. I, I, I upset some people cause I didn't really care for zero. I think it's just an extension of, uh, Xenos. And it's like, cause it's just like, Oh, Hey, here's like this weapon that's come to life or something mm -hmm. or this soul, this entity. Um, I, I didn't really think that they had a good personality. And, and I just and that's absolutely fair because <laughs> like I for what yeah. like zero I just knew that you know we were raising a child we were literally raising a baby with zero mm -hmm. and that's what it was and not a lot of people like mm -hmm. that I liked it she she eventually grew up that's and and, and, and sure yeah and, and it's okay it's okay to not like a character that's okay there are a few I don't like but you know like yeah, it's okay. It is okay. It, it, <laughs> and you're talking and about a game. I haven't finished. I haven't even finished the MSQ. So, I mean, like post in Walker, uh -huh. I haven't finished. I haven't done the past two trials hmm. at all. So I, I, I actually have to catch up on quite a bit uh, before Dawn Trail. So like, we'll see. And then I, I also thought like, well, they, they showed us a glimpse of Dawn Trail, right? Mm -hmm. And it, it feels like, Oh, well, no matter what happens before then, like the world's going to be okay. So it's like, is like, what's going to happen? Like we go on vacation, you know, <laughs> you know? The, the scions go on vacation. So everything's fine. So no matter what story they throw at us before Don Trail, it's like, well, we end up on vacation. So it can't all be that bad. So, like, we're, like we're having like, pineapples and mangoes is, and is it, you know daiquiris and <laughs> you know tacos is it like is it like ptsd after being in like a 10 year you know the world's about the end situation and garly and like garly and succession and things like that and then like you, vacation it's like is it well if they didn't show all the scions then maybe that would lead to some questions like, whoa, what happened to, you know, Thancred or what happened to the twins or something? Mm -hmm. Like, is someone like actually gonna die or are they just gonna fall asleep for an expansion like we have each to do like every now and then just fall asleep for a while? Like, that's her thing. That's her plot armor, just sleeping. <laughs> but I can appreciate and respect that. It just takes, it just takes a nap. Yeah. Or just drifts off into the, to the ether for a bit. Like, all right, 
cool. <laughs> she is she is part cat, so I mean she's got to sleep for you know a couple hours longer than uh, most people. <laughs> um, but yeah, I I think Shadowbringers is going to remain my favorite. Uh, okay, but, um, that's fair. I I'm I I don't dislike Endwalker. I I do like Endwalker, but there's I just like Shadowbringers a whole lot more. That was awesome. It was just a really good story. Yeah, I feel like that's the general consensus. Consensus when it comes mm-hmm. to in in Walker just felt weird in a lot of ways. There was always a there was always some controversy every patch. We didn't mm-hmm. really have that in Shadowbringers. We might had a had a a little bit of controversy, but not on the level that you know we had in in. In Endwalker, where it was just every raid, something new happened. You know, you know the the um, you know third party feature Andes who who get sacrificed for to the gods before they they get their uh, invention used in, in the yeah. games and things like that. Yeah, I know. That's that's upsetting. Um. I mean, there are some things that we could just take. I mean, hey, I mean, what's what's the harm in having little chat bubbles? Like, I I would love to see that. Yeah, it's harmless. Throw it in there. <laughs> uh, but I I am interested to in seeing the um, in game raid planner. It's like I don't know if that might replace like you know an actual raid plan or like peace Sim. bin or anything, but it it yeah or. Uh, Sims, uh, <laughs> if they had in-game like Sims, I don't know. Ooh, well, I don't see that happening. No. But um, no, people are going to use raid Sims. Like that's just I think it's standard now. But I think it's it's helped a lot of people clear ultimates, and because you can practice um, phases, certain mechanics just over and over and over. Mm. Uh, those the puzzle. The spe- I mean, of course, the, it's really the puzzle mechanics. Uh, just where to stand, what to do. I mean, it's it's awesome. I mean, I've used it. It's like I've I've had our group use it. Like I, I encourage people to. It's like, well, it's just just in a browser, you just practice something. No big deal. Yeah. But yeah, some people are are, are visual and they they like to see diagrams. So having that in game would be nice. Oh yeah. Like, I kind of I kind of think. And it's it's kind of like a macro. And so you're kind of getting in a to think in terms of a visual representation instead of like typing things out or like trying to communicate over discord or something. Cause I don't know if you've done the different party finders, but like in like EU and uh, JP, they just post a macro yeah. and everyone has, has their spot. So it's like, well, we're kind of, now we're kind of going into that territory with, if you have an in-game raid plan, it's like, well, now you can visually see, where you need to be, you can call your spot. I mean, it's pretty close to just using a macro. I'd say <laughs> we're still not on the level of JP when it comes to that. Like we. Oh no, absolutely no, not. No, we we got close though. We got close. We we will have a paste bin link that has a picture of the macro. So we will we will go outside of the game, click on a link, and then open up paste bin, and then click on something, and then it's just oh, here's a here's a diagram of where to stand. I'm like, how's that any different? I don't know. <laughs> I tried. I they I I really tried my best. Uh, one tier. Um, I actually during Eden, I was like, we're gonna put macros like macro group, macro group. Just pick your spot, macro group, and. I had people that would join and they'd be like, <laughs> like, just read the macro. They're like, I just don't. I'm like, what? Read? Yeah, I just don't. And then they leave. I'm like, why did you join the group? It said, only join if you read the macro. Of course, that would require them reading. So, I mean, it's, they, it's true to their word. They, they, they just don't. They don't read. They didn't read the group description. They didn't read the macro. They're gone. You're not going to convince these people. <laughs> no. Not in the slightest. Um, so, you know, you, we, we talk about that and I'm getting sidetracked. 
Your break. Yeah, a little bit. Your break. Mm-hmm. You, um, again, you've been going, like, in 14, ever since you started. Ever since you started, and you were feeling burnout. As a Raider, and this is something I ask all of my Raider friends. Because, sure. um, like, again, as a Raider, as a content creator, you know, um, you know, you want to clear content, but at the same time, you still have to be entertaining. Right. When it comes to, when it comes to, you know, focusing solely on raids, like not even anything else, no, no gold saucer or anything, you know, just <laughs> in game content. Um, does it ever get stale? Does it ever get stale just um, doing it? Over and over and over, even though you've cleared week one, and yet it's still like eight weeks later, you're still doing the same fight and other fights that you've already. Uh, I th- yeah, I think. Well, I mean, it it did get stale to me, uh, which you know caused that burnout. But I think leading up to that, because I had been doing it for for years, mm-hmm. going hard and like even longer streams, I've cut back significantly on mm-hmm. how long I stream and how often as well. Like I'm, I'm because I would do seven nights a week and I would do eight, nine, 10, 12 hours. Sometimes it'd be just, just crazy hours. Um, and I remember, um, I got my Twitch recap, um, from 2022. It was going into 23 and it was like, Oh, you have streamed for, it was like 350 days or something. And it was like an insane amount of hours too. It's like when you, when you break it down, it's like you gave yourself like maybe four weekends off over the year and, you know, and I'm like, Ooh, um, but what, when I was like gung ho, I'm like, Oh, you know, I just love rating. The thing that kept me going was the people I was able to help. So it was, it was like, while I was you know, the constant, right. Um, it was the new person, um, or the new group that I would just like get that kick out of like, okay, you know, or I'd live vicariously through them. It's like, I would, I wanted to be there for their clear and I could kind of, kind of recapture that moment like that, that I would feel like when I got my first clear, I'm like, and I'd just be there for them and I could see their reaction and, you know, mm-hmm. I'd be very, be, be very proud moment. And some of them got, you know, a bit emotional because it's like, oh, this is this is my first savage, and I've had people at Fan Fest come up to me. And it's like you helped me clear my my first savage fight or my first savage tier or my first ultimate or and and now I'm doing you know X Y and Z or I'm I'm now I'm doing World Prog. I've had people say this to me, and I'm like, wow, that's like that's amazing. So I mean, I definitely don't take back like anything like that I've done. I, I, it's it's it was all worth it. Um, just like for those people and stuff. And, and I've definitely made a good career on Twitch as a 14 creator, just doing raid content. Mm-hmm. And I made a name for myself and, and doing the, the collabs, the collaborations with other streamers. That was very entertaining too. Like I, I would get Jesse Cox in on raiding and those, that was always a blast. Like just having him raid. And we had some amazing moments. And I think he had like the most popular clip um, it was, uh, oh God, it was, um, was it P3? It was the, the hippo, hippo, can't, whatever it is. Um, uh, I forget, but he got knocked back into the wall, right? And he goes outside of like the death line, right? He's outside, but he gets rescued at the, the, the perfect moment. So he gets slingshotted. Yes, P2. Yeah, yeah. Zesh rescued him. So he, you see him out of bounds, right? Where he should be dead. But he gets rescued and he gets pulled back in. And his face, he's just like, oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> what just happened? So like we, we captured moments like that. Um, and I, I, I love that. And, and uh, I got to read with a lot of the, uh, some of the WoW creators too. Uh, and just people that are just new in the directory and they just wanted to raid and they're like, you know, you should raid with Llama. You should, you know, and we have this whole joke. I would show up in someone's stream and I'd be like, I'd, I'd see them finish this, the MSQ for sh- like, uh, 
Shadowbringers or Endwalker, and I'd be like, Prague? Prague? Like, hey, you're done. What's next? Prague? <laughs> so um, I, I get people interested in raiding, and uh, I think um, it was entertaining for, for both my community and, like, the streamer I was helping, because it's like, oh, yeah, let's see if they can clear... Uh, an extreme or or a savage fight, and and they did. And they it just, oh man, I, that always excited me. So that's that is the main thing that kept me going. Just other people's excitement, not so much my own, but just seeing other people um, enjoy the content uh, and clear and just have a good time and just and maybe maybe they continue. And uh, many of them did. Mm -hmm. They they continued their their savage or raiding journey. It's like hell yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, there it is. Yeah, the clean rescue. Yeah, that's that's Jesse's clip there. That's so good. <laughs> yeah, that got that got tweeted and blew up. It was insane. So, the insane rescue. So while you're while you're taking while you're taking a break from fourteen, there there's you know, no love lost with it. Like you still No. Oh, I love Final Fantasy. Uh -huh. Yeah, absolutely. But it's just that you, you, you just were losing it, passion. Ah, uh, yeah. I think it was like. Well, I mean, I, I did have some like a uh, very fairly significant um thing happen in my life where I kind of had to like think like just kind of revisit like how I approach content and like my happiness and my health. Uh -huh. Um, of course I, <laughs> I, I had, I had my stroke, yeah. uh, over a year ago. Um, and I remember it was actually, that was the time right before that happened. I looked at my, that was, that was when I was looking at the Twitch recap. I'm like, I'm like, damn, I do a lot of hours. And then I have, of course they, my doctor said it was, it was not due to like streaming too long or anything. I'm sure it didn't help. Mm -hmm. But um, it was like so it was like a heart defect, basically. Um, but um, after that, I was like, man, like I, I can't do these long hours. I, I just I can't do this to myself this long. And um, I think after that, after that, I was just like, just I don't know. It was I. <sighs> Yeah, I, I lost a bit of the passion um, from it, and it, things just became less fun, and it, it started to feel more like more like a job. I was like, well, shoot, like if I'm feeling this way. Also, top prog was dreadful. <laughs> that was that was awful, man. It was that was not fun. There was there was components to that where it's just like. We, I wasn't really allowed to enjoy myself. Like sometimes you get you get people that um, they they want to rate a certain way, and you kind of have to adhere to that, and it just kind of saps all of the the fun and enjoyment from the group. Um, and if you're not on the same again, if you're not on the same page with how you want to prog and how you want to approach it, uh, it's you're not going to have a good time. And that was that was definitely part of it. Um, but also, I think just I can't like put it solely on that, but it was just years in the making of just long hours of doing the same thing and not really giving myself a chance to play other games or just to have a night to myself where I, I have a guilty pleasure game or shoot like an, an anime night, oh, man. Because like you got to have that, you got to have that balance. Yeah, I mean, you got to have some time for yourself just to like rest and maybe not play this game and play something else or just just to chill out for a bit. Yeah, keep things keep things fresh. Keep and then so when you come back, you come back refreshed. Cuz even like cuz I never had really I didn't really have a day off or a night off or something. Same. I'd always be playing, always be raiding. Yeah. All the time. Uh, and now it's like, okay, well, now I now I'm playing Oh. Thank you. Thanks, baby. Nice. Now I'm now I'm playing some, hi, some other games. Yeah. Sly says hi. Hi, Sly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And um 
course, the the missus, I, I had lots of talks with her, and, and she's like, you know, she she didn't want me doing the long hours too, and and I that really limited um, how long I would prog like the next tier, uh, and how I approached it. I'm like, well, I can't do week one anymore. Mm. Like that's it's too much. You you if you're doing week one and you are serious about it, you have to prepare to do sixteen hour days minimum. Yeah. Like 16 hours where you get like a little break maybe to have some lunch or some meal. But even then you're probably just eating beef jerky uh, and prog stew or whatever it is you have. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Haps knows. Uh, Haps knows um, about the prog stew. Yeah. I he know. knows. I know about the prog stew. I look forward to the prog stew, but I, I would have my trail mix. I would have my gorp. Gorp. Like good old raisins and peanuts. Yeah. God. And I'm like, and I would, I'd, people were like, what the hell's Gorp? I'm like, well, you can't spell Prague without Gorp. <laughs> 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 <And> it's, <laughs> it was just my trail mix. That's all it was. It was so good. Oh. Mm. This is Lama made me some fettuccine. Nice. <laughs> Yeah, that was that was my snack. But um, yeah, I just ah, oh God, I, I felt so bad because like I was I was still in these um groups, um, helping other streamers and stuff. Like we had um, like uh, Temi, um, like she, of course she's she's gone on to clear like ultimates and stuff. But like mm-hmm. I was helping her go through the raid tier, um. And I had, you know, I was helping like Ponto. I had uh, Potastic P, uh, Genie. Um, I had a lot of little groups uh, where I had commitments, and I, I just had to talk to each one. It was so hard. I'm like, like I can't, like I can't do this anymore. Like I, I'm not having fun. I'm not in a good mood, and it was reflecting on stream because I was just showing up, and I was just like, <sighs> like this, this freaking fight again. <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 kill me! Like, I don't want to be here. I don't want to be here. <sighs> like, I, I don't want to be in Party Finder again. And I, hey, I'm, I'm thrilled that there are people that that still do this, like night after night in Party Finder and helping out. And I, I hope they don't lose that passion. But I, I also encourage them to take breaks and to play some other games or just yes. And don't, don't do what I did. <laughs> just too much rating um and not enough time for yourself right you gotta smell the roses you gotta you gotta you do and i missed out i missed out on a lot of good games man like i have this i have a backlog my my poor steam library man like that's i'm sure i'm not alone though right Cause it's like you you see some games and you're like oh i'm gonna get that and you you buy it and it's just never installed like you never install it it's just there it sits there in your your library unplayed <laughs> I have way too many games to play. That's my problem. Yeah. I'm I'm too damn busy. Like and I'm trying to do everything. And, and that's my thing. I try that because I'm rating. It's just I just try to do everything. And it, oh, it's, no. it, you know, you're trying to catch like all the rabbits and you know, at the same time and everyone single well, one of them gets away. It's even harder. I variety's kind of hard too, because it's like What's the next big game that like like are you gonna do the whole variety meta like the thing that's gonna the new game that's out and you're gonna play that like as it comes out and and or are you gonna miss the wave of popularity for that game and it's like man I just try to play what what I think's fun but I don't know if I'm doing it right but <laughs> you are right now I'm just enjoying myself that's probably the best that's probably the best way I feel to do variety is to do stuff that interests you. Like I'm normally not one who gets on the 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 popularity waves of certain games. Like I completely, um, like I'm still not on the Lethal Company wave. Like I, that's probably going to fade into obscurity, and I'm going to miss that wave. Um, there are so many other games that you know came out, and you know, everybody else was on it, and I'm like, eh. mm-hmm. like it's it's not me. Um. Yeah, and so like my my kind of in view on on um variety, like it's, it's <laughs> hey, just, I like Power World a lot. 
Linkster come on <laughs> yeah power roll too I, yeah yeah i'm not here. i didn't think i liked that as much but um, I, I do i agree it's fun okay Here, here's the thing about power world like power world it, it's pokemon with guns like one mm-hmm. sure i'm not really a pokemon person i'm grown up mm-hmm. pokemon person i'm 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 smt like that i'm gr- like grown up SMT's grown up Pokemon, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, like, and I, I will never like every every time that wave comes, I'm never hitting it. I've hit that wave once in my streaming journey, and eh, <laughs> like it was okay. Like that, that right. was like my second Pokemon game I've played ever. And that was it. Like it was um, Sword. It was Sword and Shield. Um, that that was the second one. Um, other than that, it's just, I have never played a Pokemon game. Actually, good. Well, playing Power World. Shut up. That's not. Hey, it's legally distinct. <laughs> All right. I, I feel it feels more like Valheim and Minecraft and Ark and like I don't know. It's it's a little bit of everything. It's like, it's like it's, it takes the good bits of a lot of games that I enjoy. Good. We can start you off but, right by playing uh, Shin Megami Tensei, and you can say you play grown, okay. up, grown up Pokemon, big boy, okay. <laughs> big boy <laughs> okay. Pokemon. Yeah. Okay, um, okay, that sounds good. But but yeah, like I, I feel like you're you're doing you're doing um, variety right if you're doing what you want to do and not what the trends want to do. Yeah, I, I think so. I, kind of miss like a wave here and there. There are some games that that do like pique my interest. Like, uh, yeah, like Enshrouded looked interesting. Um, but man, I think, well, I guess the next wave, but this is just because I want to, it's mm-hmm. going to be you know, Final Fantasy seven. Yeah. I mean, that's coming. So I, I actually have to, I haven't even touched the, uh, the first, like the remake. So I want to play through that like right before rebirth and then go right into it. <laughs> You're a good one. I will not. I will not be competing with any of you. I, and I say competing, but like, because it's not a, really a competition. At the same time, I will not be sharing the seven space in streaming with any of you because I will be playing it in my own time. I, that's how I've done. That's it. that's that's how I did Rebirth. That's how I'm done. Sixteen. I mean, that's how I did. Um, seven I, remake. That's how I do sixteen. That's how I'll do Rebirth. I man, I liked 16, but like there was a certain part in the story where I just lost all interest. <laughs> and I'm like, I can't believe this this character is no longer with us. Like, I hate this. <laughs> so I'm like, ah. And I, I just found it kind of hard to stream after that. I'm like, well, I'll I'm like, I'll just do it on my own time if I want to. It was pretty fun though. Yeah, I, I was pretty mad. I, was, I got really mad. Mm. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I've been debating like whether or not I should do seven because um, I, I missed remake like when it came out. Mm-hmm. But I got to think like my history. I'm like I, I bought a PlayStation. I saved up by by my first PlayStation just so I could play seven. It's like so like I, I loved it. I played the hell out of that game. Yeah, so I think I just owe it to myself uh, to play this. Plus, Rebirth's going to have some uh, really good parts of the story. And I, I don't want to miss that. Yeah. But I think I'd, I would rather play through it myself than watch. Oh, I'm not going to be watching like, watch anybody. Like, oh, no, no. I, I get that. I totally get that. Like, I, you know, if you're going to play it, like, please, like, mm-hmm. <laughs> don't, don't spoil yourself uh, and watch other people. No. Like their reactions and stuff. I don't know if you saw on Twitter I, when um, 16 was out and everybody was playing 16. Like it was the release date. I got me like the big old Bojangles box, like the tailgate box. Oh, oh man. <laughs> and like, uh, like had to spread on, in the living room. And they just, got some good biscuits, man. <sighs> people are missing out. Like people out they are missing, missing out. And up north, y'all are missing yeah, out. The, like, their breakfast, you, the blueberry ones too, man. Oh, the bowberry biscuits? Oh, God. Yeah. Um, oh. 
we can talk about Bojangles all day. See, y- y'all don't know. Like I talk about it like almost no, every know. week in my stream, but y'all don't know. I don't know. Man, I, I, I made I made some uh, cornbread this week. This sweet cornbread Oof. with honey butter. So a box of crusties. It was easy. It was so easy to make. It turned out great. Mm. I was like, oh hell yeah, I gotta, I gotta make that again. It, it's like dessert. <laughs> <laughs> I could talk a lot about food too. Yeah. I love food. Yeah, you know I love southern food. <laughs> yeah, I mean we're, we're, we're yeah. practically in the same area, pretty much. We we are, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Mm-hmm. So, um, since since you've taken your break, um, mm-hmm. like what have you done with yourself, like gaming wise or just like you know life wise? Um, well, yeah, I guess. Since I took my break, uh, I've been playing games that, like, I think, of course, I just really want to play. And that mm-hmm. Baldur's Gate three, that was something that I thought was really freaking cool. Mm-hmm. When I saw that, I'm like, damn, like, uh, it looks like fun. And I I have like five or six campaigns. I still haven't finished the game, <laughs> but but I keep I keep starting new campaigns with other people. And I have like my main one. I'm like, ah. like, I I was, oh god, it was so much fun. Like when. When I was playing with Arthur's, that's probably one of my favorite campaigns. Like me and Arthur's playing together because we're both kind of taking a little break. <laughs> we just had so many good moments. We we tried our best to like not screw up, right? But everywhere we went, we'd have some kind of incident would occur where we'd have to like, well, the, <laughs> the Grove incident or the Goblin incident or like someone would just right click and we went through the first act without any vendors because we ended up just killing everyone not by choice it was just there was an accident something would happen and <laughs> uh, uh, okay who was the clumsy one in your party both of us <laughs> it was so bad like um <laughs> what's that like what was that like outlaw cave area what the uh, what's it called oh, uh, oh like the, the um uh, the z the was xanthrin, it or? the xanthrin uh, Zan- Zan- xanthrin yeah so <laughs> we, get, we get there and it's like I, finally there's gonna be someone we could vendor all our crap I to know what's up, what you're about to say and i think we had the same thing happen. go ahead i had a torch out oh my god <laughs> i had a torch i had a torch I was holding a torch and there's a, there's a clip. Someone made a clip and they're like, is there going to be a Xanthrum incident? I'm like, no, there's not going to be an incident. We're just going to walk there. It's going to be fine. And then 10 seconds later, I'm walking through the boxes and there's that little stream of oil and, and you hear Arthur's going, what the hell was that? What did you do again? <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, what? <laughs> and then we had to fight everyone. And it was like, oh my God. It was just, oh God, I just, I just love that, man. And, and then I got into, um, uh, I played some Lies of P. I did um, World of Warcraft. We did, I got into that hardcore guild, uh, the streamer guild. That was unexpected. Only thanks. Um, only fangs, yeah, only fangs, and that was that was a, an experience, man. Just like just you know, a bunch of streamers that I I've looked up to, like very popular ones, and I'm like, oh crap, like all right, well, I guess I'm gonna guild with them and and playing hardcore WoW. Like I haven't touched WoW in years, uh, probably since like Legion or something. I I, all right, I I played a little bit of Dragonflight when it came out, which was fun, uh, but like with my whole medical situation, I kind of had to not play that and Final Fantasy because that was that was kind of the start where I was like, oh hey, I was let's, let's play some WoW and Final Fantasy. But then again it was just I was already doing long hours of Final Fantasy, but then during the day I would like before my stream I would play WoW. I was like this is too much. But um yeah but hardcore the hardcore WoW, man, that was that was awesome. And I, I died a couple times. Uh we had some punishments. I had a self imposed punishment. I wore my llama suit until I got my level back with a with a little sticker that said dumb. Um 
and yeah, I, I, I made it. I got to 60 and there was actually, people don't know this, um, uh, but there was a quest that I wanted to do to, um, to upgrade like my, one of my tier pieces, uh, before raid. Um, it's a, it's an elite area, um, in winter spring, like all the way down South. And you have to go into this little cave. And I was, I did this off stream, by the way. So I didn't really know much about this, this cave, yeah, this cave and this quest. Uh, but there's, I don't know. How, did you play WoW at all? Do you know like the enemies or anything? But I have never touched it WoW was, a day in my life. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, there's like this little fell, not fell guard, but little fell doggy thing, uh, kind of patrolling a cave. Uh, and I had to go to talk to an NPC inside this cave. Um, um, no, the cave itself was fine. It was everything surrounding it. It was high level elites that would just one shot you probably that I learned afterwards. But, but I decided off stream just to like mount up and just try to time it because it would patrol back and forth. And then at one point it would kind of make like this little triangle movement and it would be the farthest point it was away. And I would wait for this and then, then I would dash across. Um, and I got my quest done. I didn't really think anything of it. And when I, when I told some people in my guild what I did, they're like, oh, we had a whole group for that. Like, that thing will one-shot you. It'll net you, which will root you in place, and then it'll just one-shot you. I'm like, oh. So, like, <laughs> I could have died at, like, at like basically level 60 uh, off stream. That would have been devastating. But um, all for just a little upgrade that I probably didn't really need. <laughs> But uh, that was that was an achievement, man, and um, and getting to do molten core with everyone, man, that was a blast. Uh, sad that uh, that we didn't continue, but I, I can like, I can understand like why. <laughs> but um, and I, I I did try playing sod for a bit, which is the there's a um, it's like a classic server, which Final Fantasy could never do, by the way, because no. no one would want to play 1.0. No one no one wants that. You'd be they surprised. <laughs> People, some certain no, people I, have asked for it. There's like okay, like six people maybe. Yeah. <laughs> okay, they can, they can form not a full raid and go hang out. But <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, so yeah. So I've just been trying other games, um, sod, and then of course I picked up Power World, and uh, here we are, gonna getting ready for some FS FF seven again. But um, I think it's been a it's been a good break, um, and I've I've definitely enjoyed um, my time, and I think I've met a lot of new like viewers of people in the community that I wouldn't never have seen. Um, but of course, there is that side of variety where it's like, well, you're going to lose a lot of viewership from not streaming Final Fantasy fourteen. Yeah, that just, and, that just comes with it. Yeah, and you 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 did kind of talk about that uh in, in the past you um oh yeah yeah grand um, blue too you you said it, it stings a bit when you've had regulars for years ghost you because you're no longer pl playing their favorite uh, game. yeah i expected this to happen but it still hurts to witness and even when many said mm -hmm. they support watch you no matter what game you play yeah yeah i i knew in my mind this was gonna happen i i and everyone that's I've ever talked to you about doing switching to variety I've, after mm. you've been a one game Andy for years, like this is the expectation. But yeah, the it still doesn't take away like the emotional impact. Like when you have viewers or people that have been in your your chat and your your community for all those years, and then some of them even say, "Oh yeah, I, you know, I'll I'll definitely watch if you." when you play other games, like you should, yeah. Like you, you know, it'll be healthy for you. It'll be good for you. Like I'll watch. Uh, and then like, they just, they're just not there and that's their right. But I can't, I'm not mad at them for it, but it's just, I still feel hurt. It's like, oh man, like, cause you, you, you end up kind of getting to know some of these people and it's like, well, shoot, like, all right. I thought you were there for me but maybe it's not so much maybe just you really don't like the games i'm playing like that much but yeah it's it it did sting and i just i kind of had to like write something about it uh on twitter just kind of what i was what i was feeling at the time and uh i think i got a decent response i probably could have like worded 
uh, some of the things a little bit better uh, in that tweet. But um, yeah, overall, it just it just sucks not having like some of your regulars like just show up anymore. It's like, damn. <laughs> it's like, all right, all right. But then but then you just got to keep, you know, you got to move on. You got to yeah. foster new communities and new uh, like a new directory and and the new people that come in that again, that you wouldn't have met uh, had you stuck with one game. So I'm grateful for all the new people too. Yeah, because you have to uh, you not necessarily have to rebuild from from what you have uh, when when shifting to when shifting to variety, but um, add to the fact that you know it's uncharted territory. You don't know what community oh. you're getting in, getting yourself into, right. as opposed to having this safe knit you know space you've had for nearly a decade. Mm hmm. Yeah, exactly. Where you're like more where you're well known uh, and you're like people would describe you as like, uh, you know, pillar pillar of a community or something. Yeah. I'm like, oh, and then and then you go. Yeah, exactly. You go to some place where you're not really known mm. um, that well. And it's like, oh, OK. So, I mean, in a sense, yeah, you, you are definitely uh, rebuilding. Uh, and not only that, but like, <laughs> of course, I'm very late in the, in the game here, but I, I've been working harder on on making YouTube content and. I'm doing it myself. I'm, I'm making shorts. Uh, and so far it's just been shorts based off of like the, my, my power world uh, content, but I would like to do more with that. I, it's just kind of like my test run. I'm like, all right, well, I'm going to learn how to edit. I'm going to learn how to make these things and like Im improve and just get more efficient. And then, and then I'll get to a point where I can have like a short maybe every day or every other day. And then maybe do a long form video like every week or something. Like I, I, I want, very badly to get uh, partnered on YouTube and get monetized there uh, and grow through YouTube. Because with, with variety, you need that. You need the YouTube support to pull in people just to see you. Because on Twitch, since you're changing directories so often, uh, well, it's hard to get discovered. I think we all yeah. kind of know that too. So it's like you have to, you have to have, you know, you got to toot your own horn somewhere else. Where you can, <laughs> yeah, I uh, I kind of feel like I'm in the same boat with you, and in, in terms of YouTube, and you know, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm starting out on Twitch, making my little piece of the world there, getting my piece to pile on Twitch, and then going over to to YouTube, uh, not having any idea like how anything works, right. what the hell's an algorithm. Right. You, right you know the algorithm uh whereas you know you know and i i i kind of like to use happy as as a, as a good barometer because you know he's mm -hmm. been there he's been on youtube this entire time but at the same time he's always been on twitch too but i feel like he started well before well before you know he picked up on twitch and it it's been perfect so i, I feel like to go from twitch to youtube is definitely a hurdle especially now especially now because i just don't know what the hell to do so i i you know make smt videos and nimes and you know, this will go on youtube uh yeah go on going on youtube tomorrow by the way um all right <laughs> uh you know <laughs> like I, i'm throwing everything at the wall and seeing what sticks yeah yeah that's that's uh that's kind of my approach too um just doing shorts uh i'm trying different things like i'm adding they're adding music uh, <laughs> my last my last short i i tried doing like a bunch of zoomer okay. edits and stuff try to appeal to the uh the you know attention span of those zoomers out there yeah. <laughs> so i don't know man it's i thought it was pretty funny but um it's retention man you gotta have that retention definitely check it out where they, they where they actually watch like the full thing they don't want to watch like a full 30 seconds i think with shorts it's like it's got to be less than 20 seconds i know you think like a minute and you're like nah nah they're not gonna watch a minute for a short <laughs> <laughs> it's, 
I'm thinking just like I'm old. I'll, I'll watch something for a minute. I like I don't have that no. limited of an attention well, they, span. They're just scrolling through, man. Yeah. They, if it's if you don't catch them right away, it's like, eh. yeah, that's fair. And then that's how you get um, trashed in the uh, the algorithm. If it's if they watch the majority of the clip or the, the short, then it'll get shared more. It'll, more people will see it. One day. At least that's how I understand it. Maybe one day I will YouTube figure experts it out. out there. One day. One day. Yeah. So we'll, we'll, make it big on, we'll make it big on YouTube. We'll we're, make it big on the YouTube tubs. I believe. I, I would like to make some, some uh, Final Fantasy XIV uh, long form videos too. Yeah. I, I would, mm -hmm. And I think, I think um, w since people know me for like coaching and stuff, I could probably dabble with guides in other games or even guides Ooh. in 14 later on wait would you do the would you do the whole whiteboard thing with it the whiteboard yeah like like you um, know like on on, 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 on like football cast and everything or like where they you know they're going through like an instant replay oh yeah like, yeah 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 with like a john madden voice or something yeah, yeah. there you go like drawing over things yeah, yeah. i mean I mean, there's different ways to approach it. I mean, there's some really good like visual guides out there too yeah. already. Um, so I'd have to, I'd have to think about that one. I'd have to, there's like, I, I think I've done a pretty good job of just explaining mm -hmm. like mechanics and stuff. So but I'd have to have visuals to go with it. Man. <laughs> <laughs> going back to, um, going back to, wow. Um, mm -hmm. In the past, I want to say it was around, it was Shadowbringers. In the past, we, we saw this, this mass exodus. Oh, sure. From WoW to 14. Yeah. And then, not, now, I'm not necessarily saying it's vice versa, but now, you know, we are seeing a lot of creators, a lot of, uh, a lot of 14 creators, not necessarily leave for WoW, but just you know, leave to kind of go off and do their own things. I, yeah, I think I've seen that more often yeah, these days than in the past, like in, during Shadowbringers. I think, I think what kept a lot of uh, creatives around in Shadowbringers was mm -hmm. because everyone was coming to Final Fantasy yeah. during downtime and content. Mm -hmm. Like we had that, we had that wow exodus, um, basically the same time like now, like back in Shadowbringers, yeah. like during that gap between, um, you know, the last major patch and then, uh, another expansion. So we had, we had all this, um, time to fill with, uh, with all the, the wow people that are trying, uh, 14 and we got to, we got to watch them go through the story, uh, and then do some of the raids. Uh, and then we even had like, you know, uh, Echo, uh, big prominent WoW rating team, do the ultimates and do the savage, do blind prog. And I even got to do um, shout casting for them. They had me, they had me on uh, several times, so that was that was really cool. So I kind of I kind of got known by WoW creators uh, because like they knew me as a Final Fantasy raider. Like, well, let's get him in. Like, let's let's get him involved or something. So. Um, and that was cool. I was really actually, when I went to BlizzCon. I did have some people, not many, <laughs> not, not like, not like FanFest, but I had some people <laughs> recognize me. I think more of the creators knew who I was versus like your average, uh, BlizzCon, uh, attendee. But, um, but that was fine. That was totally fine. Quick side tangent, because like I've, I've obviously done FanFest. You have too. Um, uh-huh. How different is the vibe at BlizzCon from what a what FanFest is? Oh my god. Um so ugh, it's it's so different. Um like the way I got treated at BlizzCon as a creator was just leaps and bounds better than Final Fantasy this now. This year or just yes, so in general. this year. Yeah. Yes, okay. I've only been to one. That was the first BlizzCon I've been to. Okay. And I had an invitation from Blizzard to attend as a creator. And they gave me a media pass. So that 
got me into a whole different wing of the convention where they had a massive like um room with tables and cables like so you could set up a stream or your computer or whatever you had and you could do your live stream or you could do your work just a place to work and they had it catered so you could have lunch and snacks like and coffee and drinks anytime you want and they would just have it there and you could do your work and you could meet you could talk to other creators and they had a separate room with a bunch of computers um set up to test out demos uh the games so you could go play some like we got to do the early access um season discovery raids and we didn't have to be downstairs and like where everyone else was right it was just a nice open room where other creators were and we just kind of wait our turn uh i'm like this is amazing and they they even invited me i had two socials to go to, to and i got to talk with blizzard staff um and all the other creators i got to meet um and uh the community managers um and the other one I got invited to was like uh, like the Wowhead, um, right? And Warcraft logs, like it was uh, Mixer. <laughs> and I'm like, where was this for fans? Fan exactly. Like, like, why, why? I'm like, Square Enix is right there, right? In on that side of the country, they're are they in Vegas or something or? Uh, or no, no, they're in California. Uh, they're in LA. Southern California. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're not too far away where it's like they could have planned something outside of FanFest with community managers and the creators involved. Or, and, or they didn't even have media passes. Like, no. Now, EU did a little bit better. They actually had a mixer, and they had media passes for um, creators, and they, they actually had a, the whole, like, it was like a family feud thing. Fuck us, America. Like, God. They had a, yeah, they had like a, yeah, they had a little game show. Or it was like, no, no, no. Who wants to be a billionaire? That's what they did. And they had, they had creators come on. I'm like, well, shoot. Like, well, that's nice. So they, I think they did that really well there. Um, but um, as a personal experience, though, I mean, FanFest was a lot better because of just the people that I got to meet. Yeah. And, the friends that I had there, creators there, like we all knew each other really well. Um, so that was a lot better for that experience compared to BlizzCon. But if it's Jeff, if I only look through the lens of how am I being treated as a content creator, uh, like just removing like fans and stuff. Yeah, BlizzCon definitely did it better, and uh, the EU did it better. Even though I wasn't like invited because I'm not really an EU creator, um, but but BlizzCon, I I really wish we would take notes from that and just because then, I mean, oh, and the other thing, man, <laughs> the keynote speech, mm -hmm. plenty of seating. I didn't have to sit on the damn floor. By the way, FanFest sat on the floor. There's no, there's nothing. No, no, I, I, fin right? I finagled one of the, one of the, I press, sat on the damn floor. Press seats. I finagled. Like, I wasn't sitting on the floor. I'm BlizzCon, sorry. BlizzCon? Mm -mm. BlizzCon, I was two rows back from the front, like from the, basically the stage. Because they held seats. They had a, they had a whole, they had seats for media. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to wait in line. I just showed them this badge and be like, oh, media? Okay. Here, go, go, so, go grab your seat. I want to say the previous. And, the previous fan fest, they did something like, like when it was at the, was it the Rio or the Paris? The Paris, I think. They did something like that where they, you know, they had seats for you know press. Me and Happy had seats for front row for Stay of the Realm and mm -hmm. and, and every, mm -hmm. everything. Um, it didn't necessarily do anything for content creators, and I don't see them doing stuffing stuff for content creators in the future which uh, i pray i'm wrong i pray i'm wrong i i f i'm optimistic i think i think they have learned a thing or two i i, I want to say that <laughs> they probably realize the value of content creators like 
after Shadowbringers when you had all the the wild people come over and just it was just it it generated so much hype and excitement and it was just a lot of it was just through Twitch and YouTube. Uh, okay, here's the thing though, like when you, when you went when you went to BlizzCon, like when mm-hmm. when you know you you have the content creator section, how how many people encompass you know content creators? Oh, uh, God. I mean, you had, it was, I guess, I, I don't know. I don't know everyone, but like, it was not just Twitch. It was like, it was YouTubers. It was mm-hmm. just uh, people just popular on social media. Uh, probably like, um, I don't know, like probably just like people in the press or something. Like maybe they, they do like blogs, like gaming blogs and stuff. Um, but it, it seemed like a pretty big pretty big yeah i'd say hundreds really yeah i'd, I'd say so i mean because i didn't expect it i'm like inviting me i'm like who else do they invite I'm like i because i played dragonflight like once uh and they remembered and they're like oh hey you want to come to blizzcon i'm like uh sure and actually i do have a friend that works at blizzard um and i i, want, I really wanted to see him so it was that was like part of it too um and we got to hang out a whole lot so that was awesome but yeah, I I'd, I'd say yeah, hundreds because just just that um that big room that they had us had for us, that was pretty full. Mm. Uh and it had probably like 40 like long tables. It was like a it was like a ballroom size like area mm. just for content creators to like sit and do work if they needed to or just to have lunch. And so it was like that. Yeah, that's probably a couple hundred. And then, then we had a, a section of uh, like the auditorium for like the keynote and stuff. Because it begs the question, like we were discussing this um, kind of before, like in terms of the, the 14 community, you know, content creators, we've grown. Like it's, mm-hmm. it's not what it used to be. There, there's, like, there's so many of us in, in the category who do you put in that space? Like, I mean, you, you can't like nine out of ten. They're not going uh, to be able to no. like everybody. So, I know. You know that's tough. I, I I'd hate to be the person who has to decide because uh, someone's going to be upset. I mean, we've um, shoot, we've had situations like that uh, where they had um, uh, like you know drops in game or like you know stuff uh, oh, in game yeah. to redeem and. <laughs> Where people didn't get invited, it's like, well, why not me? You know, like what what's going on here? Yep, yeah. Or, or like even just the uh, the the uh, media tour. It's like, how's that decided? And yeah, I would. I mean, if you had to be fair, I would say just you know shuffle it up and just try to get new people or something, or maybe I don't know. Yeah. Like, that's tough because it's like you also you also kind of want to get like some of the, your the popular your pillars your pillars that like definitely do a lot of good coverage mm-hmm. and then and then maybe like some new people after that yeah. or something i think what i i don't know I mean, what i i think some people would would voice like their concern when someone got invited that was kind of like it felt like a sponsorship or something. It's like, mm-hmm. oh, they're just invited. Like they're gonna play the game once and never touch it again. Like they don't really like playing fourteen. Right. So it's like, uh, it's like don't like not them. <laughs> but I could see maybe why they decide stuff like that. It's just like, well, they're just trying to tap into new areas or something or a viewer base. OTK. Well, they did. They did invite um, Asmin. Yeah. Uh, and rich to the last uh, media tour. It was, it was virtual, but they were there. Yeah. They were in, in the, it was a, it was all digital like, uh, over discord I mean, and stuff. To be fair, like they got like OTK got invited to uh, the OTK. Yeah. They, they got invited to uh, the 16 event too. Yeah. 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 I mean, a lot of them have played 14. So, I mean, yeah. we had, I mean, with Aspen, we had, what was it? Was it two hundred thousand people watching? Or I don't know. It was something ridiculous. Yeah. It, was, it was a lot. He had a lot of concurrent viewers. For, I mean, it was insane when he uh, when he decided Asmund to play. We're talking about. 
Well, no, it's Asmin. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I could see why they would reach out to him. And he still he still plays, I think, uh, every now and then. I, I, I think he's, I've seen, like, screenshots where he's, like, hung out in, a, like, a nightclub or something <laughs> with one of his friends. <laughs> I don't know if you saw that one floating around. I, was like, I think I not did too long see ago. that. Like... Yeah, he got, like, a, I don't know, it was a lap dance or something crazy. Oh, or, my God. Who knows? Who knows what he, happened he there? But it was, not go to a year. He went point. to... I think he went to an yeah. I think this is what happened. Oh my god! Don't quote me on that, but I think <laughs> I think he went to like a one of those. He, he would find it. He would be the one to. Find he would. It. <laughs> Man, who wouldn't invite him to that? That'd be hilarious. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I, I had, I definitely had uh, a great experience at at all the conventions. Mm. Um, but primarily, I'd say from the people at Final Fantasy. Uh, but the people at Blizzard were, were really kind, too. I got, I mean, yeah. I've met more community managers and staff than I've ever, like, come into, like, contact with it at Square. So I'm like, man. Because I don't think, I didn't make, meet anyone from uh, the NA side um, at FanFest at all. Really? I don't, None of the like, team? No, like, uh-uh, you can no. see, like, Aya or... Uh... Anybody? No, no, I, I, I don't think so. No, because they were around. Like, um, I, I saw, I ran into, um, Reinhardt. Um, I met more people at an EU. Really? Uh, on the EU side, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Like, I mean, I, I yeah, I kind of did run into them, like. It wasn't even me looking for them, but I just kind of ran into them a lot. Mm-hmm. But again, like, like we were just like, <laughs> like right. we somehow well, actually, missed each other. I don't know how. Well, one day I got, I was, um, I got not stuck, but like I was um, outside in the lobby. Mm-hmm. You know, whoops. Yeah. You know, when, yeah, and a uh, uh, Draconis, you know, from Nest and stuff. Yeah. There, there was like a an unofficial like Twitch streamer meetup in the lobby. I did not find that. Or it was like it was it was so fans could see the Twitch streamers, right? It's like, hey, if you want to see your the Twitch streamers, hang out in the lobby. I think Whoops posted or something like that. But but or he he tweeted he was like, I'm going to be here in the lobby because he didn't have tickets or whatever, uh-huh. but he was just there, and I wanted to meet Whoops, <laughs> so I went to go see him. Uh, and that was, that was really cool. And all of a sudden now I have a line that's forming people that wanted to see me. I'm like, what? I'm like, I'm like, what? And I was there for a couple of hours. It was, I didn't even get to go inside that day that much until like, yeah, it was like later in the afternoon. And it was just, it's just people wanted to like say hi. And a couple of them, uh, like, like actually. I, think I, I was s- right at the entrance on the second day. It was right. It was right when you come in before the security. The oh, I'm sorry, security. <laughs> they weren't checking shit. They weren't checking. They shit. weren't checking a damn thing, no. man. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's where we were. It was. I was standing next to like Whoops had this. Of course, he had a massive line, and he had Drac there, and he had a line, and just they had a whole bunch of creators just kind of mingling there, and like lines to see different people. Um, man, and, and uh, man, so many people said some like really nice things to me. And someone made, um, I don't know where it is, but they made a sticker. They drew a sticker, or they turned it into a sticker. But it's like a, it's like me, but in like a little blue llama suit mm-hmm. with like the ninja headband and like, you know, doing like the ninja signs and <laughs> with, like, with the daggers. And I'm like, this is amazing. You made this for me. And then like, yo, what's your name? Like, I'll, I'll, I'll tag you on Twitter. And they're like, oh, no name, no name, nothing like that. Like, I, I have no idea who they are. I only just, I met them like face to face, but I don't know their name. And that's it. I was like, well, this is, this is so awesome. Thank you. Uh, do I have it on my desk? I, I, think I, I think I put all my stickers away somewhere, but it was, it's like one of my favorite things. People were so nice at FanFest. They were, they were there. Mm-hmm. Like you did you escape with your life and not catch COVID? Oh, uh, I definitely got sick. Okay, 
I definitely got okay. sick. <laughs> Did you? Yeah. yeah, it was. I felt it on the way back home, actually. Uh, I was like, oh, my God, like this. This is bad. I mean, the experience, though, like, uh, like you said, like everybody was so nice. Um, I met, like, like you said, like a few streamers, like uh, Zwan, um, Deja Vu D. Like they were. Yeah, I met. I, I met her. Did you, yeah, she, she had like little bracelets for everyone. Yeah. 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 Um, See, I got, I got mine still. My little, my little Lama Todd one. Yeah. I didn't get a bracelet. The hell? You didn't get a bracelet, Ooh. man. Sly, come on now. Cool. I, I don't, I'll I, make you one. Thank you. I'm, <laughs> I'm losing cloud as I'm getting older. I'm losing cloud. God damn it. Oh, man. Can't lose the clout. <laughs> Not me. I'm sorry, man. Uh, um, but yeah, like, yeah, it was, it was just, it was, it was really, really nice. Like, people, <laughs> people came up and me, take, took pictures, and, and, um, someone, someone gave me Kakito, uh, you know, the, um, the, the, the Puerto Rican, like, um, Ooh. like, drink. They, they brought it for me. Ooh. Like, oh, that's great, man. Like, isn't it mind blowing though? Like, cause was, was this your first first fan fest, or no, you've I've been, been to, to everyone? You've been to all of okay, okay, yeah. okay. This was that was my first fan fest. So it was, really, it was yeah. I mean, I was planning on going to the other one, but COVID, yeah, right. Mm-hmm. So that was canceled, um, and they had to do it like digitally or online. Um, I don't before think then, you, I, I just no, I, I don't I think you would have had fun in San Diego. To be fair. Like I've okay. done TwitchCon in San Diego. It was okay. Like it's not like like okay. Like personally speaking, I'm the most boring Vegas person like in general because I'll do some some fancy shit and then like do all my con shit and just fucking sleep because I'm an old man. Um, but again, yeah. like it's Vegas. There's more to the way more to do than than in San Diego. I feel. I mean, I think it's is it part. is it bad? I didn't really like like Vegas that much. I, no, I it's not a bad thing. Like some people feel that way. I don't know. It was just I I could have done with like I mean we, we went to like some good places to eat, but yeah, it was just to me it was just like good food and then sleeping. Yeah, that uh, that that was the majority <laughs> of it. Like and and then of course like me getting a bunch of alcohol and making making hurricanes for my friends. That was uh, another highlight for me. Oh, uh, like. Oh, we did. We did see, um, you know, like Swage and them. Yeah, we, we went to his show. Did I you go to that out. one. I missed out because I was hurricanes for my friends. Oh man, <laughs> he could have made hurricanes for us there. Oh. Man, would have been great. I know, Maybe. but I did see Swage. I, I did see Swage. Like, was it the first day as I was leaving, I saw Swage. It was Swage, oh. Zeno, uh, Arthur's, and like it, it, they were a whole group. They were coming oh, in. It was. As I was did going you, to, wait, when did you leave to the monorail? How long were you there? Like for a for first day, like pretty much the entire day. Well, I mean, no, I mean like overall. Like, did you did you leave like after the the second day of Fan Fest? Um, or? I left Monday. Monday, because uh, I all right. Let's see. Um, that might that might have been that night. There was another night where a lot of the content creators went to a um, like a video game bar. I think it might have been Monday night. I think, because what was the con? Was the concert Sunday? Concert was Sunday. Like the um, okay, so then it was Monday. It was Monday night concert. The symphony. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Sunday. Yeah, so I think so. Monday night there was uh, another like kind of meet up with a bunch of content creators at a at a video game bar. It was really cool. Something I was leaving, and then it it was was like a lot of people were leaving that day, so they couldn't make it. A travel hat back home was fucking horrible. Um, oh, I bet it's not even the fact that like it was like I was coming down with the symptoms of COVID, but it was the uh, wait was it the yeah I think so on on the uh, first flight like I, I had a connecting flight so I get to Chicago here I think and mm. like I have to because um you know the flight got delayed. It arrived late and, you know, I had to haul ass to my connected flight. And it was on oh, the God. other end of Chicago here. And, and so my, my fat ass is running through, through a damn, through a damn airport, <laughs> like, gasping for air. 
I, I get to I get to get to the that gate. That stresses me out, man. I get to the gate. God. The flight was delayed. Oh, I did all that running right? and shit for nothing. <laughs> I mean, I was happy, but at the same time, I was so damn mad because I was tired. No, I'm happy. So I had to do that. I, yeah, I've been, I've been trained. I can't escape <laughs> it. I can't escape it. <laughs> On my own I goddamn you, show, you I can't escape it. You, ne you never know. You never. He's 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 just there. Like you 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 say it, and then all of a sudden he just pops up in chat. And he goes like, "No, I'm happy." I'm like, "Damn it! Damn it!" <laughs> and if you're ever in a group with whoops and happy it's like you're oh my god because you're gonna say ah oh, whoops huh what and then <laughs> i never really thought about that one <laughs> <laughs> not until you said it <laughs> yeah oh man yeah i've, I've been in that situation <laughs> that has to be the fucking worst I mean, like, great group. Like, it, it's like it's like you're writing with the Avengers. Great group, but goddamn, that has to be the fucking worst. Especially fucking happy guys. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, I, like, I like writing with happy. <laughs> I, I don't know if I'd survive. We'll see what, I, we'll see what happens in Don Trail, though. I don't, I don't even have, like, a group or anything. Mm -hmm. well, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. Um... Last thing, um, this is Lama. She just started rating. Um, she started um, streaming. Excuse me. Yeah, yeah. She she has. She's <laughs> and she's doing Final Fantasy fourteen. She's going through the story. Well, she's she's how loving it. Did that come about? Did you? Uh, did she ask you for tips? Did you talk to her about it? What was what was that? What was that um, like? what was that like? Um. I think she did. She kind of took over my stream a few times when I was at BlizzCon without her. Oh, wow. And she played some Baldur's Gate or something. Uh -huh. And, uh, and she thought that it was like a lot of fun. Uh, and she, she had been doing like this, um, little podcast thing with like her friends in the neighborhood mm -hmm. for a while. So like, she was kind of getting a knack for this, this stuff. And she, she just said to me like that she wanted to, to stream i'm like okay i'm like what do you want to play and she's like i want to play 14 I'm like oh okay I'm like i'm <laughs> uh, i didn't discourage her at all because of you know my burnout or anything i was like mm -hmm. hey if if that's what you want to play that's what you like you know definitely go for it um there's there's a really good community there and they they love watching people go through the story for the first time um so yeah we got we got her set up and uh no, she still has a lot of questions and she'll come to me and there's also people in her community that have been super helpful mm -hmm. um kind of going through those uh those you know new streamer pains like especially with the the tech stuff and like yeah. OBS and setting up you know audio and lighting and alerts and this there's that can be it can be it can be pretty overwhelming like when you when you first start out okay but um but yeah I I, I encourage her and as long as she's having fun, I tell her not to worry about anything. Uh, Cause I, I, with me, it was like, I streamed to maybe 10 people for like a year, year and a half or so. Right? right. And, and then I remember the day it was like, I had double digits or something. I was like, Oh, it's like, wow. Like more than 10, like more than nine people are here. This is crazy. Um, <laughs> and then, yeah, it it's just it's just crazy. It's and I I hope that she in, just has a lot of fun with it, man. Because I think it's a good out outlet. Um, it's a good way to like kind of not just not vent, but like it's a good creative outlet just to just kind of speak what's on your mind and just to have fun and to meet some people along the way. So I can kind of give her some advice based because because i know the directory pretty well still and she does and since people know who she is uh, a bit like it, she can like make friends and she's already made a lot of friends anyway but but yeah man well i think she just kind of takes it uh, as a treats it as a hobby right now mm -hmm. um but you know, we'll see man we'll see <laughs>
But but she was there for me. Um, I don't know if you know this, but like when like I lost my job right before COVID hit, right? So I was out of work. Um, and then the country shut down. Yeah. So no one was really hiring. And I'm like, oh, crap. <laughs> now, I had been an affiliate and I, I had been um, doing a few streams and stuff, but it wasn't really like. I wasn't taking it super serious. It was just something I did in the evenings for a few hours. And I, I thought then I'm like, well, now's probably the time to see if I can make something from streaming on Twitch. I'm like what, what happened? What's going to happen if I really apply myself? And I had this conversation. I was like, if I do this for six months and it's, and we don't really see much of a return, and we're not having fun, or we're not where we want to be, like, then I'll get some normie job, hopefully, if, you know, thanks, COVID. But uh, it, it did work out. <laughs> so I definitely want to um, allow her that, too. I'm like, well, if, like, I want to support your dreams, too. So if this is what you want to do, I support it. And we all, ha- all have each other's backs. <laughs> We do. Yeah. I think that's important. Last thing, last thing. Um, to speaking on that, piggybacking off that, to anyone who wants to um, wants to get into the content creator space, mm-hmm. if you could give them any advice, would you give them? And then part two. To anyone wanting to wanting to get into trading mm-hmm. in game content in fourteen or any any other MMO, what would your advice be for them? So let's let's start with content creation first. Absolutely. Um <laughs> and I've had this conversation uh, with my wife, I'm like, and with a few other people too. Uh, I'm like, because I'm learning it the hard way right now, but I, I'd say if you're starting off as a content creator or you're thinking about being a content creator, learn how to edit videos. You <laughs> And you need to make videos for other social media platforms. You need to be on YouTube. That's huge. You sh- probably should be on TikTok and probably Instagram too. Instagram's a little bit harder. I'd say for like the, the gaming space, uh, but but TikTok, there's definitely stuff there because they, they love the little gaming clips and, and everything. Um, I, I just, yeah, I, I, if I had to do it all over again, I, I would push really hard into curating uh, my content and doing things like, and Twitch has this, by the way, uh, and, and if you have a stream deck, even better. But if you go into your dashboard on Twitch, there is a um, the quick actions, right? There's one that says add stream marker, okay? And it creates a little flag. When you go into your VODs, when you highlight it, you can see these markers on the timeline. You need to get into a habit because not, ev- now, now not everyone's going to make a clip for you. And sometimes you can use those clips, like p- chatters, they'll make clips and stuff. Use those too, but... If there's a moment in your stream that you think is a, a good thing to highlight or to make um, a, either a video out of, like on, for YouTube or something to share on social media, you just press that button, add stream marker, add stream marker, and just do that and be very consistent. And all, you, just, you can have your dashboard up or you can put it on your stream deck, just press the button. That way, when you go back through like a six hour VOD or however long you stream, you don't have to go through every single minute of it. You can go and pinpoint either the clips or the stream markers and then cut that content out of that um, and make your, make your shorts and make your reels and stuff. I think, I think that is a, that's a huge, huge advantage um, but to have there, just being able to just put markers in there rather than just pouring through hours and hours of footage. No one wants to do that. Um, and yeah, just learn how to edit. Like if I've been out, like I, I did 
go to school for media and stuff. So I do have a little bit of background with video editing, but there's a lot of new stuff out there. But there's so many YouTube guides that are less than a minute that will teach you how to do the most simple things. Like how do I add captions in like Premiere or how do I do a camera shake or some, some kind of effect? You just search for it on YouTube. There's going to be a guide and you just follow that along. You might take a couple of days to make your first video, but you're going to get better. You just keep at it. Just keep making content for yourself. You want to have content out there that creates, um, well, eventually passive income, but the it also brings in viewers passively because if you're only doing Twitch, you're only getting seen when you're live. When you're doing stuff on other social media, you have a higher chance of getting seen and discovered and then you pulling them over to your live stream. So that's, that's my content creator advice. And Raider advice? Raider advice? Um, gosh. <sighs> Man, with just getting into in-game with anyone, I mean, I feel that it's, you just have to tell yourself that you can do this stuff and it is not as hard as people make it out to be. And all it takes is just maybe a little bit of studying on your part. Maybe you have to just clean up things like your rotation or just like read your tool tips. And again, there's a bunch of guides out there and you can learn how to do these fights. Um, and as, as long as you find the right group, and I kind of go back to what we were talking about earlier about being on the same page. If, if you can find the right group of people um, where you have the same expectations, you can have a really good time um, with in-game content. Um, and just just try it out, man. Just just get in there. If you think you're going to have some fun, do it. Like, like what's, what could be the worst thing that could happen? Like, you, you, you wipe the raid. I think that's the biggest thing that, that, that people are deterred by they, they don't want to die or wipe the raid or mess up or something i'm like well if you ever watch week one raiders they are dying over and over and over and they don't even think about it they're like wipe it up run it back we go again yep you, it's just new pull new you new pull new you that's it that's that should be your mantra don't get hung up about the past mistakes if if you can answer if you can answer these questions, do you know what you died to or how you messed up? If you know, then you keep going. If you don't know, speak up, ask a question, ask someone within your group. And then if, if they don't know, then maybe I'll do a bit of uh, research or something. I mean, if, if it's week one, which I think is like, everyone should try week one rating, not like world prog, rating but like week one rating is um awesome because there is no party finder strat right you're just you're just trying to figure things out on your own and i think everyone should should definitely have that experience <laughs> that's about it man that's about it todd, yeah week one is a blast todd it has been an honor to have you in your your story, your wisdom, uh, for our future audio listeners out there, um, let them know where they can find you and what you are working on down the pipeline. Anything you anything good you got coming up? No. Sure, sure. Uh, well, yeah, I, I primarily stream on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Lama Todd. Um, you can catch me most evenings. I am a kind of an overnight DJ schedule streamers so i usually start around anywhere between 9 and 10 p.m eastern uh, i go for about maybe six hours or so I've, I've cut back a little bit um and you can find me on youtube um which is just llama todd tv so i be on the lookout for some more youtube content I'm, I'm making some some shorts i'm gonna have some some final fantasy content as well i have a have some good ideas for uh for don trail i like to put out there um and uh and I guess 
what we're going to be playing next is Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. I'm going to go through Remake, and we're going to play Rebirth. And then I'll have um, things like Grand Blue, and I might be playing some some Souls games again. Because I did see that DLC for Elden Ring. It looks pretty cool. I don't know if you're a Souls guy, Sly, but uh, you, man. You see... Those are fun. I am. But here's the oh, thing. Oh, okay. Um... <laughs> Shin Megami Tensei 5 Vengeance comes out the same day as oh, Shadows yeah. of the Earth Tree so I have to stay with my lens to... all these games man I know yeah. I understand respect yeah. don't worry it'll be around yeah it'll be around you can, you can like, always come back to yeah, it once, 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 I, once I dig my heels through uh, Vengeance I'll, I'll definitely get into uh, Shadows of the Earth Tree mm. well just thank you for having me on on here, man. It's uh, it's been really fun just being able to sit down and chat with you. Um, and the honor is all mine. So thank you, thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. Mama Todd. <laughs>